your Bible, your mother's trying to put the fear of the Lord into you. But she knows she can't do that. You understand? She needs strong men to do that for her. That's why she brought you over here. She needs you to learn the fear of God. If you don't learn the fear of God, do you know what's going to happen? You don't know what's going to happen. We're going to show you what's going to happen. Give me Isaiah chapter 66 verse 15. I'm going to show you what's going to happen if you don't have the fear of God. All right? We don't want this. Your mother doesn't want this for you. You understand? She doesn't want this for you. She loves you. So she's like, here, this is my son. Help me. You understand? Help me. Because I know... You understand? If he doesn't get right, judgment is coming. Read what you got. The book of Isaiah, chapter 66 and verse 16. For by fire and by his sword. Read verse 15. Verse 15. For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots. You hear what the Bible said? The Lord is coming back. He's coming back with fire. You understand? He's coming back with UFOs. Them UFOs you hear about? He's coming back with fire from the UFOs to burn America. To burn this place. Come on. And with chariots like a whirlwind. To render his anger. To do what? To render his anger. He's coming back very, very mad. Because there's a lot of his children out here committing sin on the earth. And there's not going to be no more repentance in that day. As soon as that sky cracked, that's it. You understand? That's it. Right now you have an opportunity to change your life. To get your spirit right. You understand? You have an opportunity to learn God's laws, to repent, to keep the commandments of God, to cleanse your soul from all the iniquity, from all the evil you've seen growing up as a child. You have an opportunity to change that right now. You're learning what's going to purify and to cleanse you. God's law is the only thing on this earth that can do that to prepare you for the coming of the black Messiah. Yes, That's the only thing that can prepare you for that. Come on. To render his anger with fury. With what? With fury. Do you want to feel God's anger with fury? Is that what you want, Julius? No, you shouldn't want that. You understand? God has created all different types of evil on this earth to judge the ungodly. Right. All different types of things he's created on this earth. Come on. And his rebuke with flames of fire. He's coming back with a rebuke. Of flames of fire. Now I know what you're thinking. All right. Well, what if I'm not here? When? What if I die before Christ comes back? Or maybe Christ ain't coming back. Maybe that's what you think. Give me Job chapter 31, read verse three. I'm gonna show you what God has reserved for the sinners of His people. I'm gonna show you that in the Bible. All right. Read what you got. Job chapter 31 and verse three. It's not destruction to the wicked. What's the Bible say? It's not. Destruction to the wicked. God says there's destruction for the wicked. You know the wicked are? Everybody that follows the so-called white man and his philosophies. You understand? The white man told you that you can commit fornication. The white man told you you can't get an abortion to kill your babies. The white man told you all of these things that you do that we practice commonly in the places that we live. You understand? Those are not God's instructions. Those are instructions from all the nations around us. And God says that he has punishments for those people. Read it again from the top. It's not destruction to the wicked. Destruction is for the wicked. That's a punishment. Come on. And a strange punishment. And what? And a strange punishment. No, a regular punishment. A strange punishment. God says he has a strange punishment for you. After you hear what we're telling you, you understand, and you choose to reject this, God says he has a strange punishment reserved for you. That's something that you hear about. you like, wow, that happened to him? What? Are you serious? Nah, not Julius. Right. Not Julius. That happened to Ju What? You know, that's a strange punishment. I don't want you to feel that. Right. Julius, I don't want you to feel that strange punishment that's reserved for you. Because you've been called to be greater than every other nation on this earth. Yes. But it don't feel like it because you live in the ghettos right now. So it really, you don't, you know, you don't, you don't feel like it because, you know, you may not have leaders within your household there to render you up as a young man. You understand? You may not have leaders, but guess what? You look at the prophets of God that's going to teach you how to take this earth over. That's right. All right, with the instructions that we have right here. Come on. And a strange punishment to the workers of iniquity. To the workers of iniquity is a strange punishment. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 28. All right, give me Deuteronomy chapter 28. One of God's punishments is this. All right, one of God's punishments is what we're getting ready to read. Give me verse 60. All right. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 60. Moreover, he will bring upon thee all the diseases of Egypt. All the what? All the diseases of Egypt. You thought STDs was something that the devil made? No, nah, that's something that God created. You right. understand? That's a judgment. It's some of them you can't get rid of. You understand? Some STDs, once you get it, you got it forever. Do you know what I'm talking about? Huh? You a virgin, Julius? 
Say it again. You say yes. How old are you? 15? Very good. All right. We want you to preserve that. All right. Why? I'm going to ask mom. Why, why, why is it important that he preserve that virginity? Because his body is a temple. Say, say it again. His body is his temple. That's right. His body is his temple. Right. You can't defile the temple. You know when you have sex with a woman, you take on her spirit? Right? Did you know that? Did you know that? Every woman you have sex with, right, she takes on your spirit and you take on her spirit. Now you got her demons and she got your demons. You understand? STDs is, is, is in the physical realm. You understand? Those are called what? What's the STD? Say it again? A sexually transmitted disease. Give me the, when the spirit is gone from, from a man. He come back with, I think it's Matthew 14, 12. All right? You said STD is called what? A sexually transmitted disease, right? You know what another name for an STD is? Like, like an example of one? A spiritually transmitted demon. Mm. Wow. wow. You never knew that. Wow. Woo. You never knew that. Every time you have sex with another woman that's not your wife, you take on another demon. You understand? Now you wonder why you ain't you going crazy in the house. You wonder why you gotta you just keep scrolling on the TikTok. You can't stop. You can't stop on the TikTok. Can't put it down. You understand? That's a demon. You understand? It's demons. Demons are real things. They spirits. All right, read what you got. The book of Matthew, chapter 12 and verse 43. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man. God says when an unclean spirit leaves a man. You understand? Come on. He walketh through dry places, seeking rest and findeth none. He leaves you and then he goes to a dry place. That's the rebellious land. He's looking for other brothers and sisters that rebel against God's laws. All right. But after a while, you know what that demon's going to do? You know, mom, what that demon's going to do after a little while? The Bible's going to tell you. Come on. Then he said, I will return into my house. I will go where? Into my house. Mom said your body is a temple. Where's that demon going to go back to? Say it again. To your temple. It's going to go back to what's supposed to be a temple. That's where it's going to go. You understand? But is your body a temple if you're smoking weed? Is your body a temple if you're smoking cigarettes? Is your body a temple if you're having sex with a woman that's not your wife? Hmm. Huh? Is your body a temple if you're watching porn? You understand? No, it's not. Is your body a temple if you are even uh, 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 hanging out with brothers that do these things? Huh? Is your body a temple? Is your body a temple if you're doing those things? No, it's not. You're defiling your temple. You understand? Read. Then he said, ah, we're returning to my house. So when that spirit comes back, he's supposed to be coming back to that temple. Right? But if you're, if you're caught up in these sins... All right, that, that God calls iniquities, abominations, you understand? That's evil. That spirit will come back and he's going to be comfortable. All right, come on. From whence I came out, and when he has come, he found it fit empty. He found it empty because you're supposed to have what inside of you? God's laws. You're supposed to be keeping his commandments. You're supposed to be reading the Bible. How often do you read the Bible? Say it again. You don't. How often do you pray? Not often, you understand? God says you need to pray three times a day. Right. You understand? That's what the Bible says. You thought the Muslims made that up. No, nah, they got that from us. Right. That's in the Bible. You understand? We need to pray, pray three times a day. That's how often we need to pray. Why? Because there's a lot of evil out here. You need God to prepare your way. All right? It says that in the Bible. Come on. And when he has come, he find it fit empty. So you don't want that demon to come back and find your body not praying. You don't want that demon to come back and find your spirit not reading the Bible. You don't want that demon to come back and find yourself empty like that. That's what it means when it say empty. You're not filled with God. You understand? You're filled with uh, uh, the world and everything they're in. That's the evil music you listen to. You listen to evil music? You say no. All right. Well, what music do you listen to? I stopped listening to the evil music a while ago. Very good. The Lord is calling you. He's calling you, Julius. Right. The Lord trying to pull you, trying to teach you his ways. You understand? You cut off the evil music. All praises to the Most High. That evil music will corrupt you. You understand? That evil music will welcome those demons back to your temple. That's what that evil music will do. You understand? It's like you got left your door unlocked. You go to sleep at home with your door unlocked? No, why? Because you don't want somebody to come up in there and take what you got. That's what the demon's going to do. The demon's going to come back and take everything that your mother taught you. Every good thing she taught you, the demons will come rob that from you. You want that to happen? 
You got to gird yourself up, though. That means you got to study. You got to pray. You got to apply. You got to do these things to gird your spirit, right. to lock it. So when that demon comes back, he got to go somewhere else. Right. He can't get comfortable in your spirit no more. Right. You understand? Come on. For which, excuse me, and when he has come, he findeth it empty. When he come, he does what? Findeth it empty. You don't want these demons to come back and find your spirit empty. Come on. Swap and garnish. Then go of he. That means that it's, it's you, you just, you, you know how you prepare your, your place when you got visitors coming to your house? Right, mom, what you do? You start cleaning up. You want it to be nice. You understand? That's what we do when we commit sin. We clean our houses up for the devil to come back and get comfortable in our spirit. That's what we do. You understand? We can't live our life that way because that devil will come back and he's not coming back alone. Who's he coming back with, Mom? Who's he coming back with, Mom? He's coming back with his... The Bible's going to tell you. Read on. Then go of he and take it with himself. Seven other spirits. He take a what? Seven other spirits. He take a what? Seven other spirits. The Bible says that that demon, that devil is going to come back with seven other spirits. You understand? You thought you was dealing with pornography, right? That's what you thought. Not, not just you, because there's many people out here that deal with that spirit. You thought you was just dealing with pornography, right? I can watch a little bit of porn. I only do it once a day. You understand? That's what we think. All right, yeah, you know what I'm talking about, right? I can only do it when I'm good. No, that demon is going to come back. The next day, not by himself, he's going to come back with how many other spirits? Seven other spirits. That's seven other what, mom? Demons. That's seven other devils. Seven other. I'm going to show you what demons they are. All right, give me a minute. Finish that up. Seven other spirits more wicked than himself. More what? More wicked than himself. Those demons are more wicked than himself. That's who he's coming back with. He got friends. He's coming back with friends. You understand? Come on. And they, it's her in, in the world there, in the last state of that man. In the what? In the last state of that man. That means each time you commit that sin, you understand? Come on. It's worse than the first. You're getting weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker. The devils, the demons are making you weak. They're taking your soul from you. That's what them demons, they, they taking your soul from you. You thought you had to make a deal with the devil to sell your soul. That's what you thought, right? You thought you had to get a, get, a, get, a, get, a, get a sheet of paper and sign your soul over to the devil. That's what you thought. No, every time you commit sin, you're selling your soul to the devil. That's what you're doing. Every time you commit sin, you're selling your soul to the devil. All right? Give me Mark chapter 7, verse 21. Read the demons that the, that the brother's fighting with. Come on. For from within, out of the heart of men, out of the mind of a man, come on. Perceive evil thoughts. Perceive what? Evil thoughts. What type of demons be in your mind? Come on. Adultery. Adultery. Come on. Fornication. Fornications. Come on. Murderers. What? Murderers. What? Murderers. That's hatred for your brother. Somebody disrespect you. Now you got hatred for them. Maybe you ain't murder them yet. Right? But you're thinking about it. You're plotting about it. God calls that murder. You got murder on your mind. You just ain't did it yet. That's a demon. That's hatred. You got to get that spirit out of your mind. How you going to do it if you ain't got the Bible? How you going to do it? Come on. Thirst. Covetousness. What is it called? Thirst. Covetousness. You know what covetousness is? And covetous, covetousness is not being content with what you have. You understand? You're willing to break God's laws to get what you want. Right. You understand? Because you see what everybody else around you got. And it make you feel some type of way. You understand? But you ain't got the means or the resources to get it like they did. You understand? They probably got it doing some evil. Now you know what you think about? You're going to do some evil too so you can get on a level. God calls that covetousness. You got to come out of that spirit. You got to repent. Be content with the things that you have. The Bible tells you to work. Get a job. Take care of your family. Provide for your nation. All right? God tells you to do it lawfully. You understand? According to God's laws. All right? Because the Bible says something about evil men that break God's laws to get ahead. The in. Bible says something about them. All right? You don't want to be found like that. That's not how you want to be found. All right? You can't, you can't, you don't want to get ahead by breaking, <coughs> by breaking God's laws. You understand? That's not how you want to get ahead. Read on. Thus, covetousness. That's what? Covetousness. Come on. Wickedness. What is it called? What is it called? Wickedness. Come on. Deceit. What is it called? Deceit. Come on. Lasciviousness. What's it called? Lascivious. You know what lasciviousness is? That's a, a strong sexual desire. You understand? That's the desire that a lot of these men get when these little girls be shaking their ass out here. All right? You know what I'm talking about? Little girls be twerking over here in the street. You know what I'm talking about? 
That's the desire that the little boys get when they see the little girls twerking in the street. So, Julius, you know what that means? You gotta learn God's laws so you can keep order out here in this neighborhood. You gotta, hey, hey, y'all chill out. Don't do that. That's not good. That's nasty. I don't care. You understand? I'm a watchman for you. God set me up to look over y'all. That's what you are. You got if you don't have a purpose if you're not defending the, the good and fighting the evil on this earth. That's what you were created to do. You were created to do good on this earth. You were created to war against the evil. You don't have a purpose outside of that. When you see evil, correct it. That's your purpose. That's your purpose on this earth. It's to be a good example, you understand, to those that are within and without. That's your purpose. Outside of that, you're just a zombie walking around here with no life in you. That's going to give you the life that you need to feel, to feel like you fulfilled your role on this earth. Right. Come on. Excuse me. Thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, and evil eye. And what? And evil eye. You know when you look at somebody and you just don't like them? They ain't did nothing that you know about, but you just don't like them. You understand? <clears throat> you know what God calls that? We just read it. What was it? An evil eye. You understand? We can't be out here with an evil eye for each other. You know who got an evil eye for each other? Let me ask him. You know who got an evil eye for each other? Our own people. Our own people. Who does our own people have an evil eye against? Specifically, give me an example. Our own people who are what about the Crips and the Bloods? They got evil eye for each other? No. There's some Crips and Bloods out here? No. In Virginia Beach, is it Crips and Bloods? Yes. yes, it is. You know that. You understand? I grew up in Virginia Beach. I know it's Crips and Bloods out here. Right. You understand? Do they got evil eyes for each other? Yes, yes they do. All right. Now, what about the uh, Latin Kings? Huh? They got an evil eye? Yep. They got an evil eye for each other? What about the blacks and Hispanics? They got an evil eye for each other? Yes, sir. But they brothers though. God says they ought not have an evil eye for each other. That's called a demon. You understand? You got a demon or you got an evil eye for your brother. You got to repent from that. Read. An evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. The Bible calls pride a demon. When you feel prideful, all right, when pride is when you feel like you're above God, all right? When we celebrate our birthdays, that's called pride. God says don't do that. You understand? We're not supposed to be celebrating our birthdays and all that. You celebrate your birthday? Say it again. We didn't do it. No, we don't. All right, very good. You got to repent from that. You understand? Pride is when you leave God. All right? You depart from God. God says, thou shalt not kill. You say, uh, I'm going to have a little hatred in my heart. Why? Because you're prideful. And you feel like you know better than God. That's pride. Pride is going to begin all sin. All right? It's going to start with you having pride to depart from the Lord. That's called pride. That's a demon. You got to repent from that. Come on. Foolishness. All these evil things. All these what? All these evil things. All these demons. Come on. Come from within and defile the man. They defile your temple. Remember that temple we were talking about? You're supposed to keep clean and holy. God says all of these things defile your temple. They defile it. All right. Your temple is supposed to be holy, but it's only as holy as you keep it. Your mama can't keep your temple holy for you. You understand? She can't control what's in your mind. How's she going to do that? She can't. You understand? She cannot do that. Right? You got to fix what's going on in your mind first. All right? What is the nation? Nation is men leading by example. Nation is community. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. Nation is you.